Today we're going to go over cleaning a point cloud in Cloud Compare and creating a surface from that point cloud in Civil 3D. So to get started, we're going to drag and drop our point cloud into Cloud Compare. Uh, you can apply the default settings. Okay, so once your point cloud is in Cloud Compare, highlight it in the DB tree on the left hand side of the screen and click the CSF filter, which is in the plugins drop down in the top menu. I've found that the best settings to use are always steep slope and check slope processing. I've tried it with flat and I've tried it with relief and it just no matter what the terrain is, it always seems to give the best results. Under the advanced parameter settings, set your cloth resolution to 0.1 leave your max iterations as they are and set your classification threshold to 0.2. Make sure your export cloth mesh is unchecked and press OK. Um, I've found the best way to do this is an iter iterative process to start at 0.1 and 0.2 and doubling your values each time applying that CSF filter to your ground points. I've played around with the settings I've always found that starting at 0.1 and 0.2 and just doubling it, it just always tends to give the best results. Okay, we're back from the first iteration of the CSF filter. I like to immediately change the name and rename it to the parameters I had set so I can go back later and figure out what was done to this particular cloud. Um, I'll turn off the ground points and take a look at the off-ground points right away. And I'm basically looking to make sure that there aren't an abundant amount of ground points that were removed. So there's a little bit at the edge of the road here. It's looking pretty good. Yeah, mostly just trees and the walls of the buildings. And if you look at the ground, it looks like some trees and the roofs have remained, which is pretty typical. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight our ground points, our new ground points point cloud. And we are going to rerun the filter, like I said, doubling our input parameters. So I'll change that to point 0.2 and the classification threshold to point 0.4. Each time we run the... CSF filter with more aggressive parameters, it will take less time to process. And we're back from our second iteration, so we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna turn off our ground points, we're gonna look at our off-ground points, and make sure we haven't stripped away any ground. So again, we're looking pretty good. So we will highlight our ground points, same thing. Now we're on our third iteration, doubling the values. Okay, we're back for our third iteration. Same thing, we're turning off our ground points. We're checking our off ground points. We've stripped out a lot more trees. We're starting to get some roofs. And let's see what's left in the ground points. So there's still a couple roofs left, but we're starting to look pretty good. So let's highlight our ground points, plugins, CSF filter, and let's bump this up to 0.8 and bump that up to 1.6 and run it. As you can see, it's much faster now. Okay, so again, we're turning off our ground points. So we're looking pretty good. We got a few more roofs out. Some bushes over here, it looks like. Yeah, so that's fine. So we're still good. We haven't stripped out any ground points yet. Um, I suspect when I double the values again, we might start to get, we might start to pull out some ground points that shouldn't be pulled out. So let's run it and see. Okay, we're back on our fifth iteration and we'll turn off our ground points. This time we can see we over extracted a bit too much here. So we have the option of deleting the last iteration or we can segment those 
those particular points out and put them back into the ground points point cloud. So let's do that. So we're gonna open the segment tool. It defaults to the polygon selection, so we'll highlight the points we would like to put back in. And you end the command with a right click. I'm gonna press O now to pull those out. And right now I'm in segmentation paused mode. To get back into selecting, I press spacebar or click this button here. And now again, we're defaulted to the polygon selection. So I'm gonna highlight the rest of the points I want, ending with a right click and pressing O. If that's all the points I want out, I just simply click this check mark button here and a new point cloud is created. So that these are the points we want to bring back into our ground points point cloud. So these are the two point clouds we want to merge. We highlight both, uh, clicking one, then holding control and clicking the next. Then we go to edit and merge. Select no and rename it as needed. So this is ground points. Okay, so we have our final CSF filter ground points cloud and we have a bunch of off ground point clouds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of my off ground point clouds, highlight them all and merge them together. Okay, so the reason I'm doing that is because later I'm gonna add a classification for these points and merge them back into my ground points cloud. So from, I'll have a point cloud that contains all my ground points and all my off ground points and to separate them, I simply adjust the classification. So just make sure we label this new cloud appropriately. Off ground points. Okay, and we're done with that for now. So now we're gonna go back to our ground points. There's still a few things we can do to clean it up. Um, you can see the yellow bounding box here that gives us an idea that there are some outlying points over here and a few up there. What we can do is we can highlight that cloud and we can use the cross section tool and we can pull this up and get rid of those large offliers right off the bat. So this button right here, export selection as new entities, we're gonna wanna click that and we're done with that tool. So now it took our original ground points that was filtered just from the CSF and it exported the ground points filtered from the CSF and that cross section. At this point, we can do a bit of housekeeping so we have a bunch of different ground points point clouds from the CSF filter outputs. We can go ahead and delete all of these except our last one. Uh, we can delete the folders as well. So we're left with our input cloud. We're left with the ground points from the CSF, the one we worked off of, and the one from the section. We can actually get rid of this one as well. So we have our final ground points from the CSF filter and the cross section and our combined off ground points. Next, we'll run an SOR filter on the point cloud. SOR stands for statistical outlier removal. Uh, it's found in the top toolbar. I've found that the default settings of six and one typically work the best. You can play around with these numbers if you'd like. I haven't found a huge difference. So to see what it's done, we can edit the point size of our input cloud and our output cloud and flip back and forth between them to get an idea of what it's actually doing. So you can, this is with no filter applied. You can see there's quite a bit of points that are removed from the filter. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that previous point cloud and now we have one that's been SOR filtered. 
after the SOR filter, we also have a typical noise filter available to us that applies a slightly different a slightly different algor algorithm. So I've again I find the found the default settings typically the best. So it's as simple as pressing OK. Uh, if you didn't catch it, the tool is found under Tools, Clean, and Noise Filter. Except the default settings, run it. Usually doesn't take too long, long, long in Civil 3D. Okay, so let's see what we got here. So, yeah, it tends to decimate the cloud quite a bit. You can see it removed some erroneous points. It wasn't nearly as good as the SOR filter. I think I'll still use it this time because it's slightly better, even though it did decimate the cloud quite a bit. What, what was our input? Our input was 10 million points and our output was 4.7 million points. So yeah, it, it decimated it quite a bit, but for doing what we're doing, that's not too bad. Um, so I'm going to get rid of that. Alter the name. It's SOR plus noise filtered. So what we're going to do next is we're going to do a bit of segmenting. Some manual deleting and extracting of points. So we highlight our point cloud. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to add a scalar field to our point cloud in which we can colorize our point cloud based on elevation. So to do that, we highlight the point cloud. We go over to tools, projection, export coordinates to scalar fields, and it's the elevation that we're interested in. So now we have a height map of our point cloud. We can you can see scalar fields active is the Z coordinate. Uh, we can alter our color scheme if we would like. And the graph below lets us alter where the bounds of that color scheme are applied to. So anything outside of the bounds will turn gray. So this can be helpful sometimes if we have any large outliers. You can see some vegetation that's pretty obvious. There might be some over there and at any point we can turn it back to RGB. Which might actually be easier for removing some stuff. Over here it might be a bit more difficult. So whatever makes it easiest for you to pick out erroneous points. Um, with that graph, sometimes what I like to do is alter the bounds in particular areas to adjust how the point cloud is displayed at a certain elevation. So when you do that here, it becomes pretty clear what's ground and what isn't. So once we have it looking the way we want, we can start manually cutting out parts of the point cloud. So again, we're going back to the segment tool, defaults to the polygon selection. It's a left click to start making the selection and a right click to end it. Then we're pressing O on our keyboard to take those points out. And then we're, when we're ready to start selecting again, again we just press space bar. bar. Quite a bit. You so you're going to want to kind of jump back between the RGB just to make sure you're not pulling out something that's true ground. But yeah. And then again, jumping back into space bar to start making selections. So go through and start cutting out points that aren't ground. How much work and how much effort you put into this process is dependent on how accurate we need the final product to be and how much effort you want to put into it. Okay, so I'm back. I haven't removed too many 
erroneous points. I don't want to make that the point of this video. Uh, when I'm done selecting them, I can either press the delete key on the keyboard to get rid of them or segment them out like I spoke about earlier using the check mark. Um, since we're trying to classify this point, if we were trying to classify this point cloud, I would use the check mark. I'm just going to delete them, get rid of them, and then we're just going to go ahead and use this for the surface creation. So we can see there's still a bunch of junk left in here. Um, but we're not done. We're not done. There's still more we can do to kind of automatically clean this up a little bit. Okay, so next we are going to rasterize our point cloud. So if we click the tools button in the top menu and we come down to projection and rasterize. So what we're going to do is based on a cell size that we specify here, this will be the, the size of the cell, the size of one side of the cell. We are going to choose the point that has the lowest elevation in that cell. Theoretically, this will give us the ground elevation as we are choosing the return on the point that's the lowest, which should be the ground versus the point next to it, which was the blade of grass or someone's arm or something like that. The trade-off here is the larger step size we use, the larger uh, cell we draw, the more we're going to artificially lower our surface. So consider a, this might not be a great example, but consider if we had a top of bank, for example, it's not going to pick the peak of that top of bank. It's going to pick the slope of that top of bank that's as low as it can be, but still limited by the, the step cell size. So it's going to artificially project the, the point cloud lower than it is. So that's the, the negative, but the positive is, is it's going to pull out all the points that are higher because they're on something other than the ground. So it's really a trade-off that we're doing with this tool. Uh, you're going to have less of an error with a smaller step size, but you're also going to get more returns on erroneous points that aren't true ground. So it's really how clean is how clean is your surface and how how much undulation is there in the surface. So I know this is a fairly flat surface. There aren't many banks anywhere. So I can actually use a fairly large step size. So what that's going to do is remove a lot of the erroneous points, but we're still going to have a fairly accurate surface. So I'm actually gonna use two meters here. Uh, the active layer will be height grid values. The projection will be the Z projection because we're interested in elevation. And we want the minimum cell height. If we chose maximum, we would be getting all the, the, highest, the highest values, the treetops and the tops of houses, if there were any remaining. Um, we don't need to interpolate scalar fields and this checkbox here. So let's go over that. So right now what we're doing is we're isolating the point in that cell that is at that lowest elevation and we're choosing that point. If we take this off, then we're taking the elevation of that point, but we're reprojecting it in the middle of that cell, uh, which we don't want to do for this example, we want to just choose the point that is at the lowest elevation and leave it where it is. Um, so empty cells, you have a few options here. You can interpolate. So it's going to kind of fill in what it thinks the, uh, where the, those points would be if there was data there. I don't want to do that. The surface in civil 3d can do that later. I'm just going to leave it empty. And that looks pretty good. We get a height grid here. We have some low points around here that I'm kind of concerned about. But um, let's see how it turned out. So we click on the cloud button to export our new 
rasterize point cloud. And I like to crank up the point size right away to kind of fill things in. So again, it's uh, we got a height ramp being applied and it actually looks pretty good. So we have one point here that's higher than it should be. All these are on the ground, but for this particular cell size, this must just have been the lowest, how it drew the cells, this would have been the lowest point possible. So it's not perfect, but it, uh, like this patch of grass here, let me just turn up this point size a bit. Yeah, you can see it's it's getting rid of a lot of the stuff that's too high. All of that's been cleaned up. All of that car has been cleaned up. This whole fence, li like fence lines are very easy to pull out. Um, it got rid of most of that. So it does a pretty good job. It doesn't do a perfect job. So what we can do is sometimes I like to apply an SOR filter on this point cloud just to clean it up a bit. So let's try that out and see what happens. Okay, so this is before, and that's after. Cleaned up some of the outliers. Yeah, you can see over here we removed it. I think it took those out, yeah. So let's go ahead with that. Let's update this so it's filtered, it's rasterized. Okay, and we still have our off-ground points if we want them. So we're looking pretty good here, here, here. Yeah, but something that's true ground. So yeah, I'm fairly happy with that. At this point, we can go back and use the segmentation tool one more time. If we'd like, we can adjust these values to get an idea. Yeah, that kind of clears, you can see the erroneous points right away when we do that. So again, like I said, it's really how much time and effort you want to spend in cleaning up this point cloud. When we go to make our surface in Civil 3D, we'll have one last method to clean it up, but I think I'm fairly happy with that, so let's move ahead. Okay, there's one last thing we need to do in Cloud Compare, and that is just save our cloud. So highlight the final cloud that we're gonna work with, yeah, which is this one here. Click the save button, uh, choose where you want to save it to and choose a name. Segmentation tool one more time. At this point we can go back, make sure whatever makes sense for you. Uh, yeah, we're gonna want original resolution. This is gonna put each point to the nearest mill. If we did want to classify our point cloud, I'm going to go through how we would do that right now. So this is our filtered but not rasterized ground points. So if we want to classify it, we'd probably want the density that we would get from it not being rasterized. But you know, it, that depends on the situation at hand. Let's just say that we do want that density. So we want to go up to the top toolbar and select the add constant scalar field button so we need to choose a name so it will be classification and our value so this is ground we know that we are going to use two for our ground value for classification and we can see that it defaults to our scalar field and what are we viewing we're viewing our classification Okay, so we have our ground points classified, and now we need to classify our off-ground points. So repeat the same process. And 
let's just classify this as zero for unclassified. And now it's just as simple as combining the two point clouds, which we know how to do. And yes, that time we are gonna select yes. So now we have our scalar field. We are viewing our classification option. And you can see blue is set at zero and red is set at two for ground. So now we can export this or bring it back in and it will have that classification with it or bring it into another software program and retain that classification. And of the, oh, let's just alter that name. And save it to export it. And we can delete it, delete that. And in the interest to make sure we're doing everything right, right, we'll push in this, drop that in. Except the defaults, you can see we're gonna be bringing in our classification as long as we did it correctly. Okay, so looks pretty good. Let's just make sure we have the scalar field classification available to us, and we do. So that's great. Now we're done with Cloud Compare, we're gonna switch gears a bit and open up Recap. We can go ahead and start a new project to which we're going to import a point cloud. It's first gonna prompt us to set a project directory. So bear with me while I do that now. And we will select the files we wish to import. So that will be, this is our ground file, ground points file. Uh, we are gonna wanna import our files, index our scans. And once the scans are indexed, we are gonna wanna launch the project. So um, we can play with a few settings here and kind of use this as one last chance to delete any points, which I'm going to do now just because it's so easy in recap. I'm going to take advantage of that and get rid of some outliers. So what I'm doing is I'm just using my left click to select the points and the delete key to remove them. And it doesn't need too much. In fact, I might uh, go ahead with that. Yeah, so next we just wanna save as to make sure we are in fact deleting those points. Remove 3D point cloud only. And it's removing the points and that's it. We are done in recap. Okay, we are in civil 3D now. I'm gonna quickly set my coordinate system, which is UTM zone 10. And then we are gonna to go to the insert tab, jump over to the point cloud panel and press the attach button. We will navigate to our RCP file and click open. Uh, you can select the default settings. It will be georeferenced, or it should be, as we can just double check quick, quickly by comparing against the aerial mapping. And yeah, it is. So we can turn that off. Beautiful. Okay, so we'll highlight our point cloud and we have a bunch of visualization tools that we can play around with at the top of the screen. Um, again, we can do heat maps. And one interesting thing that we can do in Civil 3D is we can actually 
We can digitize on the cloud here using the 3D polyline command. We just want to make sure our 3D O snap is turned on and that is the quick command F4. And make sure Sorry, bear with me. Let's see. You have to 3D O snap. Okay. That's 2D and center face vertex. Node of point cloud. Okay, that's what we want. Okay, so turn off our polar settings. Yes, okay. So just use the 3D polyline command. Make sure your 3D O snap is on, F4 and you'll automatically be snapping two points in the cloud. So for this particular example, this isn't gonna be helpful at all because it's just a ground point cloud, but say we brought in our classified point cloud that has the buildings on it, we can start to draw uh, building, building sides or roofs or whatever we really wanna. So to create a surface, we're gonna select the cloud then go to the Create Surface from Point Cloud button under the Civil 3D panel. Select that, set our name, set our style, let's do 0.5 meter contours. We can select Next. Uh, distance between points, we can adjust this if we have a feeling that our tin is going to be too dense. We've already decimated this cloud pretty significantly so I don't imagine it's going to be an issue. If I had a full density cloud I would probably adjust this but I'm not too worried about it at this point. So filter method. So a lot of people tend to use the Krigging interpol interpolation in the hopes that it's going to remove some noise from the point cloud. So let's give that a shot and see what happens. So you're gonna get a notification that it's processing in the background and we should get a pop-up when it's done. Okay, so it's done now. Let's look at our surface. So it does look pretty flat. I'm not seeing many peaks. What's concerning me is this road is pretty much vanished. So you can see it's triangulated from the far side of the road. You can see the road was running through here and it just shaved off a significant portion of that road and we've lost a lot of data. Same thing with the road down here. So that filtering method has actually caused us to lose a lot of data. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna create another surface. Let's set a name, OG. OG no filter set everything else the same and run it without a filtering process okay now that's done that's OG So this is it without the filtering process. You can see it doesn't look as pretty and that's because it's every single point is being used now. But it's going to be more accurate overall. So you, it's pretty obvious it's picking up the road now. We do still have the option of smoothing that surface to make it make these contours more visually appealing. Um, just to illustrate how much the Krigging interpol interpolation has smoothed the surface, I'm going to create a volume surface between those two surfaces.
Okay, so you can see at the worst, there's up to eight meters of difference here. I want to see. Okay, so you can see there's some, some significant changes in elevation between the Kriging interpolation and the no filter. So where it's flat, it, there isn't much change, but still there's, uh, there's definitely more than I want to see. I don't, I'm, I'm, I don't want to see 20 centimeters of smoothing in areas like this that it's not really needed. And this, yeah, it's, there's just an unacceptable amount of smoothing going on with the Kriging interpolation. So I'm going to, I'm going to caution everyone from using that. And, uh, I, I'm going to suggest that just put the effort into cleaning the point cloud and use no filter. If we want to make our contours more visually appealing and remove some of the jaggedness out of the surface, we do have the option of smoothing it. So highlight your surface, come up to the edit surface button, come down to the smooth surface tool. Uh, I usually just do grid based with a natural neighbor interpolation. The output region, we can click on these three dots. It's going to be the entire surface, so I enter S. Grid spacing, let's do a 30 centimeter grid spacing to match our grid spacing from the rasterization. And that will give us 1.1 million triangles, so that's quite a bit. We, If we wanted to, we could... Uh, increase our grid space grid spacing but let's run with it and see what we get we get we get and it changes in elevation okay so that uh, cleaned up our our contours quite a bit they do look much better and if we view it in object viewer it looks quite a bit better as well so we still have our road we didn't lose any data we just smoothed out some of those jagged portions. So yeah, be, be careful of the Kriging interpolation. And my suggestion would be go no filter. If it turns out too jagged, smooth the surface a bit. To give us an idea of how clean we can get clouds based on their topography and obstructions, I'll run through a few more examples now showing you the before and after and the surface created from those clouds. This is a nine and a half million point cloud of a flight I did a few months ago. Um, the issue with this particular cloud is these bank tops and bottoms. So when I do use the rasterize feature, it's gonna tend to shave off the top of bank here. So we're gonna wanna use a smaller step size. However, to do that, it's gonna have to be relatively clean before we get to that point. So I'll, uh, I'll let you go for now and I'll bring you back with the cleaned point cloud and explain what I did. Okay, so we're back. It's been about 10 minutes since I started with the original cloud. I ran a CSF filter making my way down to 1.2 and 2.4. Then I used the SOR filter on it and did a raster, or a rasterized to a step size of 0 0.3 meters. And this is where we're at. Um, it's looking pretty good. I'll be back once I have a surface created from it. Okay, so we're back and we've created a surface in Civil 3D. So that's the blue you're seeing here. And it's underneath line work that was extracted from this data from a previous project. So you can actually see it, it's looking pretty good. It picked up the features of the railroad, this path up here. It didn't cut away too much of these tops and bottoms of banks. So this line work here was actually drafted on the tops and bottoms of banks. And you can see it's a little bit above the surface but uh, it's actually very close and running right through it in some places so I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out I have another surface and it matches up actually very well 
yeah, it's uh, there's some minor differences, but it's it's pretty good. And the important thing to remember here is when we're using drone data, we're getting data density that we just can't match using traditional RTK or total station measurements. We're getting points every, in this case, 30 centimeters, as that's the step size that I used, where if we're lucky, we're looking at five, probably 10 meters with traditional means. Not to mention on this particular site, the data capture took me, I'd say about 20 minutes, not, not under 20 minutes to fly the site, 10 minutes to set ground control, uh, I'd say an hour to process, and the complete time spent cleaning this point cloud, probably 30 minutes, a little less than that, I'd say. Um, if I were to topple this size of an area, with traditional means, the field time is probably gonna be somewhere in the range of four or five hours. I'd say even more than that. And the time connecting lines and creating a surface is pretty much gonna be the same. So we saved a huge portion of time flying it with a drone. The data density is obviously much better. We have areas outside of our immediate area of interest that we can always go back to and extract useful data if need be. And being a small site, the difference of field time it's gonna to take to capture the data is gonna be closer. If we expand this site to say 20, 40, 100 acres, that's when we're really gonna see the value of being able to use a drone and extract a surface from that. So I'm gonna close this down and hop into another example I did that's a bit larger and we'll run a comparison on that data set. So this is our final example. This is a flight over a new bridge that's being constructed. So there's a lot of issues with trying to survey this traditionally, obviously the topography just makes it nearly impossible to survey these steep slopes and there's no access down to the river below. Um, I ran a CSF filter, an SOR filter, and then rasterized it. And this is the final export from that. So you can see there's some gaps in the trees, but that's just because this is photogrammetry and I'm actually surprised it was able to get underneath the trees as well as it did in some places. The bridge was e easily removed and it actually, it actually turned out pretty well. It was able to extract the ground surface underneath.